We discuss life in colonial English America. For England, the conquest of their Atlantic colonies began after the successful harvest of Jamestown's tobacco crop. The climate and geography of the Chesapeake and the southern areas allowed for the growth of large-scale cash crop plantations, as well as for small farms inhabited by Scotch-Irish immigrants. The southern colonies were composed of the Carolinas, Virginia, Maryland, and Georgia. Slavery and indentured servanthood were utilized throughout the region as a means to keep profits in the hands of the elites. The labor produced tobacco, rice, indigo, and eventually cotton. Southern society existed as an almost feudal aristocracy, with the wealthy living on large distance estates, controlling the political power, owning slaves, educating their young through tutors, while the small farmers lived as peasants. The New England colonies were born under different notions. They lived under the concept of shared sacrifice, puritanical religion, education for all, and a driving work ethic. Two colonies in particular that formed the nucleus of the region were Plymouth, led by William Bradford, and Massachusetts Bay, led by John Winthrop. Plymouth had been formed mostly by separatists who thought the Church of England was immoral, and they wanted a place far from the temptation of Sunday activities and drinking. After moving to Holland first and finding there were no jobs, they decided to move on. The Plymouth Joint Stock Company was supposed to land them in Virginia on the Mayflower, but they missed and ended up in Massachusetts, where they built a life with non-separatists. At the New Plymouth Colony, the two groups sat down together and drew up the Mayflower Compact to build a shared self-government but remain loyal to the king. They almost died the first winter from lack of preparation. Wampanoag tribe members showed them how to survive the following spring. Centered in Boston, the Massachusetts Bay Colony was founded by Puritans who believed the Church of England could still be reformed from within. Their leader, John Winthrop, called their colony a city upon a hill. New England, where they had settled, had rocky soil and not too easy to navigate rivers, so they mostly avoided large plantation slavery in favor of small independent farms. They became shipbuilders, tradesmen, fishermen, and entrepreneurs. They lived their life around the church and built schools for higher religious training like Harvard and Princeton. Their need to increase their land holdings often found them at war with the French and the natives. The middle colonies are typically known as the breadbasket region. They are filled with a diversity of thought, religion, and commercial interests. For instance, William Penn was given a colony for his Quakers to practice their faith, where they also fought slavery and paid natives for lands. The English fought the Dutch in a war to secure the New Netherlands and renamed it New York. Sources say this was probably the most loyal region to the crown as well, as colonial merchants relied on a stable relationship with merchants in Liverpool and Bristol. The region also saw farming of wheat and food staples. It included deepwater trading ports like New York City and Philadelphia. After the Restoration and the Glorious Revolution, all colonies had a governor appointed by the king, but most kept their legislative body that still controlled the power of the purse. Voting tended to be divided among property owning men, but some colonies only allowed religious members to make decisions. English rights allowed for juries and limited rights of speech and press. Aside from Catholic Maryland and its acts of toleration, Protestantism and natural capitalism tended to rule the English colonies. 